pretty good transition. Um, overthinking groups, overthinking puzzles. Um, in our in our games, we try to keep all the puzzles very related to the theme. If you, what I mean by overthinking is that like you find patterns where there aren't any. Find just absolutely ridiculous um, associations that make absolutely no sense and, and don't have anything to do with it, or you, you find like a price tag on something and you think that's the code. You know, uh, groups tend to do that a lot. And I mean, you out there don't know me that well yet, but for me to say people are overthinking, they have to be really overthinking because I overthink just in general. <laughs> so. No. <laughs> um. Pretty soon we're gonna have to just turn this into the Trapdoor Institute. Um, <laughs> we're teaching every, you know, uh, how we want them to play. Um, <laughs> not, not how to play, how we want you to play. Um, well, it does help, it would help them solve puzzles too. Yes, yeah. Uh, a lot of times, you know, we joke about when we're designing these themes that the easiest way to stump our players is to put the answer right in front of their face. Yeah. You know, the, the most simplistic puzzle in Cure Z is the entrance to Hobby Masters. I don't want to spoil it, but for anyone who has played Cure Z, if you have, comment below or throw a like on the page because Cure Z is awesome. Um, but the Hobby Masters puzzle, when it was in its design phase, Chris had you know, come to me and been like, Tone, it's too easy. We can't put this in the game. Everyone's going to get it like that. I'm like, Chris, it's right in front of their face. No one's going to get it. Yeah. Sometimes the most obvious answer doesn't seem like it's obvious. Yep. You know? Yep. Or, you know, when Cure Z was in Red Bank, it's not so much an issue now that it's in the Poconos because I think the big light up red buttons kind of help put a spotlight yeah. on what you need to do. Yeah. But the stages of zombie virus posters. Yeah. No people way. used to spend 40 minutes on that puzzle. <laughs> no, you know, what, we, what I was talking about before we started today, um, we had a group in F5 who was getting really frustrated, and one of the gentlemen in the group was, we have in the, in, in the F5 game, we have this elaborate chain puzzle, and the chain will help you get to a certain area of the game to unlock something, and this this guy just couldn't process it. Um, that, to the point that he was entangling himself in the chains, he was cursing left and right. I'm trapped! And, you know, <laughs> Giving, giving the most basic of hints, and they were yelling back at us to not give them that hint because it's not working. It's, it's, it's. it's oh, I can't I, stand I, when I, they do I, that. I had, I'm gonna put that down for next week. I had, I, had, I, had, I had to go in. I had to go in and just to explain to them, you're overthinking this. Watch, and I was able to successfully do it for them in like two seconds. But um, sometimes you just need to step back and take a breath. Yeah, and just. Process everything real quick. Oh, there and it is. Then you'll, <laughs> and then you'll, uh, you'll get there. And sometimes it's also just letting someone else in your group take a look at it. You know, sometimes you just don't see something the way it needs to be seen. And if someone else from the group comes in and says, oh, it's like that. you know, It's only that, been that three happened. episodes of the show. And we, we actually end up, I think, talking about them quite a bit. But David and Lisa from Room Escape Artists, um, watching them play with their group... Uh, they tend to be like the absolute like optimized gameplay structure because they're very much that. Like if you know you'll if you ever watch them play like for game masters out there watching, or if you're a player that winds up grouped with them at some point for whatever reason, um, they'll you know kind of have a rule of like if you know if you've spent four or five minutes on a given puzzle, drop it and let someone else look yeah. at it with fresh eyes. Uh, because you're probably looking at it with way too much thought behind, you know. Yeah, and it, it comes down to the, the gameplay as well. Like, in, in our Witch Hunt game, we have certain puzzles in the game that they exist now, and you can't do anything with them yet. Like, we plant it, but you can't get that payoff until later on in the game. Right, you don't have so all the pieces I mean, yet. The, yeah, yeah there's, there's usually not going to be something random. I can't speak for every escape room. because There's plenty that have that. a lot of I mean, random there are, there are, but yeah. If you play one of our rooms... We don't leave things random. You know, if if you if it seems like you don't have all the pieces yet, you probably don't have all the pieces yet. Right. Um, to, to piggyback off of Frank's point before, um, you know, the thing I've noticed is that a lot of a lot of younger kids seem to perceive things in the games that adults don't. 
Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. And the, the kids are on the right train of thought, and then the parents just, you know, shush them away and, you know, spend the next 20 minutes wasting time on something that the kid already figured out. Yeah. Well, and um, telling the kid they're wrong. Yeah. And they, <laughs> pipe down, Johnny. It's like, Johnny's right. <laughs> I, I've always found that multi-generation groups are actually do the best. Yeah. Just because they all come at it from a different angle. You got the grandparents thinking of one thing, you got the parents thinking of another thing, and the kids thinking of another thing. You know what I always find strange about that too, though, is that usually it's the kids and the grandparents that do the best, Mm -hmm. and like the 30 to 40 year olds that are completely just left in silence with no idea what they're doing. It's, it's sometimes people are stuck in their certain way of thinking and can't think outside the box. You know, because it does take some thinking outside the box too. Yep. Um, so it, it, yeah, it, it takes all kinds is, is what it yeah. amounts to. But listen to everybody in your group too. Just because your right. you know, your seven year old kid says something doesn't you shouldn't dismiss it as something silly. Take it into consideration because nine times out of ten the kids are always right. Well, since our photo icon on this topic was the Riddler, this is kind of a perfect segue. We have promised that we were always going to talk a little bit about pop culture um, and how puzzles relate to pop culture and entertainment. Right. So um, here we go. We have um, 